Hello, this is Andrew Babakian from VMware's Networking and Security Business Unit. On behalf of Dimitri Desmond and I, we'd like to thank everyone who attended our VMworld session on NSX solutions for multi-site data centers. So what we'll be covering in this video is a short demonstration of the ingress optimization for multi-site networks that we did for this particular VMworld session. But before we get started, just a quick disclaimer that most of what we'll be covering is available in today's product release. However, there's some parts of this that won't be available till a later date. Let's get started. So what we have here is the logical topology that I'll consistently use throughout the presentation. So we have two sites. Uh, on the left hand side, we've got site Sydney, which will be the primary active site. And on the right hand side, we have site Melbourne, which will be the secondary active site. So we're running NSX 6.2 in this model with vCenter 6.0. So let's go through the topology from the bottom up. You'll see that the virtual machines are connected to a universal logical switch. And this is a switch that spans multiple sites, allowing applications to have an L2 adjacency. Now this is connected to the universal distributed logical router, or is known as the UDLR. And this allows to have local egress optimization per site. So in the event you move an application from site A to site B, the VM's default gateway will be local to that particular site and this removes tromboning and suboptimal packet forwarding between machines. So, as we move towards the next logical model, we've got the NSX edge and that's uh, be seen as an autonomous edge on each site and therefore we'll be advertising the traditional routing protocols like OSPF and BGP to the WAN border router. And the WAN border router is the gray objects that you see in each site, which will then form an adjacency to the WAN and will attract the traffic to the respective data centers. So really this is a typical design where you'll have many satellite sites, branch sites, aggregating into the WAN to talk to site A and site B. So as I mentioned, we're running uh, the virtual infrastructure management with vCenter 6.0. And on the top right and top left hand side, they'll, they'll form an enhanced links mode. And we also have NSX 6.2 that runs in uh, primary and secondary modes for high availability. So let's focus on the traffic pattern in this example. So what we have here is basically the model would be to actually have uh, the packets coming from the WAN all the way to the, the site A. So you'll see here the HTTP traffic is going to come all the way in and hits the NSX edge to the universal distributed router and then the VM catches it, that's a great catch. And the packet goes back the return path. So that's great, we've got the ingress and egress. So now we're gonna move an application from site A to site B. And in this instance here, I believe the vMotion is actually being based on beer. It's actually ran across and must be very thirsty. But what it doesn't realize is the packets are still going to come via the primary site suboptimally through VXLAN and hit the VM unexpectedly, but it caught the packet, which was great. So what we're going to look at here is basically start working on solving the ingress uh, optimization in the event an application moves to a, a secondary site. So we can attract the traffic to the correct data center without having to go through the VXLAN packet forwarding to hit that VM. So let's go to the next slide. So this is going to be the network topology for the lab demonstration. So you'll see it's the same as the previous slide. Now what we're going to be focusing on right now is those red boxes which is key to the solution for the multi-site ingress techniques. So what we've got on site A is the red box that derives the slash 24 prefix from the NSX edge. We advertise that to the WAN border router and therefore you see it in the WAN to go via site A for that particular uh, entry. Now on the right hand side, you'll see that we're waiting on a migration event. So basically what we're saying is, let's not do anything until an application actually arrives to the secondary data center. Once it arrives, based on the event occurs, a policy will then be invoked and therefore will advertise a more specific prefix like a slash 32 to attract the traffic to that respective data center. So let's go over that in a bit more detail. So the packets coming in will come via site A, as we know, because it's the slash 24, and the packets will get to the NSX edge, then to the UDLR, then to the VM. That's another great catch, and therefore it goes back. Just to be on the same page, 
The packets also uh, will arrive for all the other VMs on that same tier. So for example, the .12 VM, uh, the packets will arrive there and the, the default gateway locality will ensure it goes back to the respective uh, path and that's great. So now we're going to do a cross VCV motion with vCenter 6 enhanced length mode from site A into site B. And this time we're going to do a legitimate vMotion. So off it goes. So this bit's key to the idea. So what the web VM is going to do is get the attention of the edge. It's going to then open up the guest OS IP address and we're going to publish that IP address into the global routing table of that NSX edge. The edge will know how to get to that VM via the UDLR, but via OSPF it's going to update this particular prefix to the WAN border router right above it. The WAN border router will then take that prefix and then update the WAN, so therefore we're going to have a, small, a more specific prefix in that table. So for all packets going to site A, it will continue to do so because we've got a slash 24. So to get to that .12 VM, fantastic, it will go via that one way. Now, for the more specific prefix being slash 32, we'll now know how to get to that particular web VM, therefore going via site B, and the packets arrive to the .11 VM. And there we have it. So the overarching principle that's sort of happening here to explain in more detail is that we've written a script that actually collects data from the vCenter A and vCenter B. And this gives me a global view of, of all the objects that are residing in, in both these systems. So creating this separation of concerns, I know what clusters and what hosts are there, and I can wrap sites around them so I, I can tag them based on their location. So therefore I know where the applications or the VMs are residing. So when we start looking at network virtualization, the architecture of moving networking close to our applications allows me to then peer into the physical networks and attract the traffic to the respective data center, which is very powerful. Therefore, we don't need to think about invoking other legacy protocols like Lisp just to achieve the same thing. So let's show you this in more detail in the actual lab demonstration. So let's get started with the demonstration. So you can see here that we're inside vCenter and we can see both vCenter 1 and vCenter 2. And basically what we're going to be focusing on is doing a cross VCV motion, uh, moving web01 from site A to site B. So just before we get started, we want to make sure that we have IP connectivity. And I'm just going to click on the web page for web01 and we can see that's working just fine. So what we're going to go next before the migration is actually run through this script. And this script is responsible for the object tracking, like I mentioned, for the VMs. And based on the, the movement of this VM, we're then going to apply networking policies to ensure that we're going to attract the traffic to the correct data center from that north-south perspective. So what you can see here is that we've got the view of host and clusters here. So you can see here that the clusters are actually mirroring exactly what you're seeing in vCenter. But one thing that's different is that we're able to now tag these resources to the respective site, which you can give as a user input. So for example, we know Site Sydney has been given to these clusters and hosts. Now, the next question we're going to look for is at the bottom here, please select the secondary site. So basically it's asking which site we're going to be doing ingress optimization. This instance, we're going to be uh, using the uh, Melbourne site for that. And the second question asks, now, based on the Melbourne site, which VXLAN are we interested in to apply this policy? So we're going to focus on the web tier. So that's VXLAN ID 50,000. But it doesn't mean that it's just having to be 50,000. We can do a lot more than that. We can add more VXLAN IDs such as 50,001, 2, 3, 4. Basically, what we're describing is that we're able to put many IDs in one container to get that same common ingress policy. So we can now decouple from the actual physical networks with this particular policy structure. So once I select this and press enter, right now it tells me that there's no VMs found in the Melbourne site, which is accurate because on the left hand side, there is no VMs found there at all. So let's go ahead and 
move this application from site A to site B. So I'm going to right click Web01, I'm going to click Migrate, I'm going to click Next, and select the clusters. So here we're looking at DC2, and we can see on the right hand side that's DC2 here from the vCenter perspective, and click Next. Um, continue to click Next, click Next again, click Next again, and finish. So we just kicked off that task. So if I open up the vCenter, we will see here that there's a relocate message for Virtual Machine Web 01, and we're now moving this application to Site B. So we'll just wait for this to complete, but while we're having that wait to complete, I'll also have my application running here, and we can now wait for the events to be triggered based on this vMotion. So you'll see two messages appear in this particular window um, inside this Python module. And there we have it. We have two messages that have just been received on the Python module. We can see here that the vMotion has been detected and Virtual Machine Web01 has checked into Melbourne. And therefore, the second network event has occurred that a, a static route has been injected for Web01 into the secondary edge. That's great. So let's now validate what we're seeing in these event messages here. So I'm going to go to NSX. I'm going to click on the edge. Select the secondary. and then go into the routing. So what we can see here, that's fantastic, we can see Web01's IP address is here, advertising as slash 32, next hop pointing to the UDLR that's site specific to the secondary site, which is, that's fantastic. And then the last piece here is kind of like my, my favorite of getting this operational visibility of this particular route. So you can see this description field has been automatically populated with ingress optimized for Web01, which basically indicates now that we know where that route's originating from, we know who that route is for, and you also can kind of think about a typical router where you type in a show IP route and you just see a, the, the subnets and prefixes and so forth, but you never really understand which applications are responsible for, for those particular routes. So here we've got an opportunity now to actually write this in and actually give you that, that visibility from an operational perspective. So that's fantastic. So we just want to make sure that that we can reach that web VM. So I'm just going to try again and, and make sure we can reach it. And fantastic, we can. And from a, a global uh, routing table perspective, if I go into a WAN border router and type in shy IP route OSPF, we can see that that most specific prefix is actually being installed. Uh, through the, the routing protocol updates. So basically what we're going to focus on now is actually move this application from the secondary site back to the primary site and this route entry will automatically disappear as well because we're going to be summarizing back to that slash 24 which is the entry above. So I'm going to go back to the host and clusters view. And I'm going to right click the Web01 in Site B, and we're going to click Migrate. Click Next. Go back to Clusters view. Select DC1, which is Site Sydney. Click Next. Click Next. Click Next, Next, and Finish. So I'll open up the recent tasks, and you can see here we're now leaving uh, site Melbourne, going towards site Sydney, and the relocation message has been generated, 
and we'll now open up the, the script and we'll just wait for the event messages to be triggered and see the network actions that's been uh, been invoked based on the events that have occurred, which will be in this case the, the cross VCV motion. And that's complete. Now we're getting the, the third message here and the fourth message. So vMotion event detected, Web01 has now checked back into Sydney being the primary active site. And based on that, the subsequent message says that it has removed that route from Web01. Great. So let's validate this. First of all, I always like to check to make sure we've got IP connectivity to the Web VM. And I'll click it now. And yes, we do. Everything's still working. And if we go back to the WAN border router and reconnect uh, that command back in, so show IP router was PF. And we can see here that slash 32 has now disappeared because we're now only focusing on that primary prefix, which is great. And just to do one last validation to ensure that um, we've removed those routes from NSX, we'll go back to the edge and uh, validate that they've also disappeared. So I'll go back into the NSX edge. And you can see here that the entry has now been removed based on the, the migration event. And that concludes my presentation for the cross VCV motion in, in conjunction with the ability to do local ingress based on the location of applications. So I uh, thank you very much for watching this video.